companies have when they, when they start down the path of SOA? Right. It's a good question. I mean, I, I've seen a few. I mean, from my perspective, right, they're not allocating budgets according, to, you know, really for the enterprise SOA build out. So the budgets are usually gotten from, a, you know, projects that are going on. An app project. So, an app project. <laughs> but what you kind of don't get uh, from, you know, implementing a tactical project is that time that you need to build up, build out SOA infrastructure. So, you know, things like ESB, message-oriented middleware, all of the things that you're going to need to construct these services. Uh, unfortunately, during, you know, if you have, if you implement irregular projects, all you have time is to kind of try to steer them in the right direction. So, you know, what I would encourage companies to do is at least set some budget and some time aside to build out this SOA infrastructure. Because once SOA takes off, this becomes really the mission-critical infrastructure. Most of the comp data and products will be running through that, you know, ESB, messaging, BPM, and a lot of the times, these things are not ready from a production standpoint, right? They start crashing just because they weren't configured correctly and they didn't spend the time to do it. They think it's, you know, it's not a necessary type of thing. But yeah, get, get your house in order, you know, maybe a couple of months, to, to, you know, three to four months of exercise of actually getting the platform right and then pick a project and kind of you know, start, start getting, get, getting it done in a service-oriented manner. So talk a little bit about JBoss. <clears throat> How did you get involved with the JBoss um, family? Um, the JBoss products, um, how do you tend to use them? So what, what's your relationship with us? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a very long relationship, and uh, you know, we have some children, and you know, stuff like <laughs> that. nobody's laughing in the audience. Any? We had children yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not sure whose they were. Uh, so open source for us is very strategic, right? I mean, our firm belief is that a lot of this underpinnings, what we call SOAR infrastructure, will be part of the professional open source platform you know, five, you know, three to five years down the line. So from our perspective, where we can use open source as to build out that infrastructure, um, you know, it's more advantageous because you don't have to go through licensing battles. It's, it's open standards, right, which is a key part of, of SOA. And this is where kind of JBoss slash Red Hat comes in very nicely. It's a, you know, we deal mostly with Fortune 1000 clients, so they wouldn't think, let's say, of just bringing in some, you know, some software that's not supported. They're very open to professional open source, where they say, well, if I can purchase uh, a contract that's gonna support it, if this thing goes down, I'll buy it. I'm, I'm not necessarily very you know, excited about paying you know, tons, tons of money to IBM. Uh, from our perspective is we're investing more and more into skill sets around JBoss Red Hat uh, products, just because our clients are starting to accept it. You know, and you know, we've been working with, with the product set for about three to four years now. Mm -hmm. Um, we think it's actually excellent enterprise-ready software, most of it. I mean, there are some aspects that are kind of getting hashed out, but it, it will get there. Um, and it's, you know, it's good stuff. It's, it's good stuff. It runs, you know, for, I'm going to talk later on today um, with one of our clients down in Bradstreet. You know, they have an enterprise implementation that includes Red Hat and JBoss App Server as an ESB. Um, and it's no issues, right? So this is, this is it. So where do you think, um, certainly the app server has been well adopted and some of the frameworks that we have been very well adopted, JVPM, but in terms of sort of future growth in a portfolio, if you were counseling the community here in which to perhaps start new projects and new things that haven't been tackled before, and in, in, in when you start to build out a full SOA reference model, what, what, would, those, what would those new things be, or those, those uh, areas which require some activity here in the community? Well. My thinking is, and you guys probably already doing that, governance is, an, you know, runtime governance is the next, next step. I mean, I, um, I like the MetaMatrix acquisition because the data services were kind of neglected. So governance, uh, I would say, is the next thing, you know, because that kind of completes your solo platform. Mm -hmm. And kind of getting the ESB products, you know, I was hoping that you guys kind of get it out faster so you can get those kind of battle scars out there and, you know, productionize, you know, we put all the patches in so we can start offering to the client. So getting the JBoss ESB really in uh, hard, rock hard shape. Stay tuned, there's some news there. Oh, all right, okay, so <laughs> maybe you answered. Um, and the other point I was going to bring up, but I already saw that you guys making a lot of strides in the space of quote unquote golden image uh, with JBoss.com. So again, a lot of clients don't want to kind of keep putting the software together in the integration. Right, straight from the community. Yeah, straight from the community. It's, it's a big hassle. It's, you know, the operations folks will not support them. So, you know, the idea, you know, going from jboss.org to jboss.com where it's a supportable image, you know, the bits and bytes are supported and you get new releases is a great idea. I mean, again, dealing with, you know, having